Before I get started, just a little preview on something I've been working on. A few people hit me up as to why I was using Anaconda, and I've been training a neural network on my entire music catalogue from the last 20 years and getting it to see if it can write music that sounds like me. <laughs> it's kind of getting there. really likes drums at the moment. Here's a more recent iteration. So anyway, I'll be getting into that more down the line. That's just um, a bit of a side hobby, something I've always wanted to do but didn't really have the time and now I'm just starting to get into it. Um, so no doubt when that's more developed I will talk more about it okay so we're looking at this pitch to MIDI machine um, I've done a little bit of tidying just before I started this session uh, what I have is some audio tracks with new samples uh, I've just got some melodies some vocals and some bass uh, I've also just got a couple of instruments so I can um, play some notes Let's see I've got my push set up here uh, this is going into a group which contains the pitch to MIDI center device which you can see here it's all still quite simple and that's sending it over to this um, MIDI track which just has a grand piano at the moment so I'm just going to play through some of these samples to show you how it sounds as is This one's not so bad. You see we're still getting some random notes. <laughs> this one's a bit nuts. And so I had to do my favorite task, which is going through stock vocal samples. <laughs> always a good time. Um, over on the melodies, this is a bit different, I've tried to mix it up a bit, I've used some dry stuff and some stuff with verbs and stuff. So this one is all over the place. This one's not bad. So you can hear, I think the reverb of this is screwing it up. Anyway, and yeah, I was interested to see if basses were easier because uh, lower frequencies, less room for error, slower, all that kind of stuff. But look at this. It's kind of cool in itself. Maybe all the um, higher harmonics, especially like really, really out there stuff, it's pretty intense. This one I've just got a sine wave, so this is a good kind of uh, baseline test. So that's pretty much perfect. So the piano is actually coming from the pitch detection here. Um, something a bit more So anyway enough of that that's um five minutes gone already uh, What I want to do today is I want to work on getting rid of the artifacts um, Well, this is going to start getting to the limit of my knowledge uh, eventually so if you have any suggestions or anything that I might be missing here I don't need to make this perfectly accurate but I would like to tie it up a bit um, the first thing I'm going to do is take the running average and uh, actually first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a oops a G switch 2 
which simply sends the input to one of two outputs depending on a toggle box. So if I connect this to this inlet here and then connect the output of the snapshot, um, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll put another fl floating point value here and then we'll insert this here. This is just so I can kind of AB compare it to just the raw signal. So as I turn this on, you'll see that it switches it between one of two outputs. So this is just going to be the raw output, like so. And we will build the rest of the stuff over here. I'll put this over here. Um, and the way that I reckon the best way to get the average here, um, there is an average device, but I feel like it's a bit overkill for what I want to do. Uh, I'm just going to use the ZL objects. Um, so we have a ZL group, which takes the input here. So the input's coming out as a massive list. If I was to print the output of this to the console, um, you'll see we're just getting continuous values over and over. And if I go ahead and play something here, um, so it's basically going as fast as the snapshot's going to allow us. So if I bring this up, we get a much slower rate coming through. Um, so I'm going to use a ZL group. What a ZL group does is it groups things coming through and then puts them through almost like a capacitor I guess like it's it kind of you know if I say zero group 10 and um, let's start feeding it through this output here and then I put a print here and we'll turn this on you'll see we're now getting groups of 10 coming through so this this is accepting all the inputs when it hits 10 when it, I guess when its buffer hits 10 it dumps everything out in one group of 10 and the cool thing with that, well, let me just get something playing so you can hear that. And of course, we can speed this up by bringing this snapshot millisecond value down. It's kind of interesting how this speeds up the more frequency information there is. Um, and then um, to average that out, I'm just going to use a... ZL mm, median, so it's going to get the median from the list of the numbers. So if we were to insert this here, so the median is zero, so it's gone back to a group here. So let's play this. So this should be basically giving us a running average of. Um, each group of 10 coming through and I think I feel like if we add a integer value here to this 10 to determine how big the group size is to get the median from and the snapshot that should in theory give us a bit of resolution again like, I don't know if this is going to work guys but let's so let's have a listen so we can get rid of the print I'm going to send this across here so this is our raw signal let's turn it on That's all good, but the, th the thing we need to remember here is um, we delay is pretty inevitable here. Uh, I'm assuming, okay, so the, the retune, the pitch detection, I mean, it needs to look at a waveform oscillating in order to get that, and it needs to do that over time. So I guess this is doing a pretty much an average or median type um, problem solving thing as well, but it needs to have the waveform um, doing something regularly enough in order for it to, to, to detect a frequency so that's introducing delay within itself uh, then the snapshot of course we're basically choking this ourselves with a millisecond value and then you know we're kind of uh, t multiplying it by whatever the group number is as well so we're going to have to find a sweet spot where we're sacrificing delay fortunately this um, you know my goal with this is to control MIDI uh, devices in Ableton that have MIDI input enabled, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. But let's play, let's play with these two parameters here. See if we can get this sounding good.
Okay, let's try something a bit crazier. It's you and me. Another day in paradise. Our souls are free. Let's stay right here forever. Cause you're all I need. Okay, we got some harmony there. That's not ideal. Oh, this is pretty good. Let's turn, let's switch this to raw. Okay, this one was good already. Um, I'm going to add one more thing in here, just so... Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a minimum and a maximum. Um, just so that um, we can get rid of any, like, rogue notes that are way outside of the register that's currently being played or sung. <laughs> Um, I think the best way to do this is if statements and we can just use whole numbers we could probably put this after the F to M so we're basically going to say if um, dollars I1 is more than dollars I2 so uh, man I forget the format here then dollars i1 else out to dollars i1 that should work so i'm basically saying that um if the input is more than this number then output it here otherwise output it here so if I attach this to uh, this over here, let's get rid of that. It's, um, yeah, so let's put it here. So if this number is more than this number, then output it. We want it to come out of this one. Let's get that real crazy guitar sound going. So nothing's coming through because we've got zero here. I think we're making a bit of progress here, eh? Um, so we also need another one of these. And if I believe this should work, if I take the output here, this should allow me to set the maximum and the ma ma maximum and the minimum. So if dollars I one is more than this, oh look, I, I really should be doing it this way. I should say less than, and then take this output here. So if it's less than this, this is our maximum. If it's more than this, this is our minimum. So anything over this number is just going to come out here, which goes nowhere. Anything lower than this number is just going to come out here. So we should be able to set our MIDI values. And in fact, we can switch these to uh, MIDI, actual MIDI notes. So we can actually determine this. In fact, you know what, we can borrow these. And we can put this here and this here. So we can actually set these values to whatever we like yeah okay let's have a look let's play around with this a bit more Try something else. This one's a bit crazy with the uh, reverb. Uh, 
Uh, the cool thing about this is it should be getting rid of the negative 999 value. Let's have a look. Oh, it's right here. I'm um, also going to put a do 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 speed limiter and we'll give that a value as well. What does this need? Sense output interval incoming continuous value. Let me just have a look at this. So this is the speed in milliseconds. Okay. So speed limited basically just um, limits the amount of information. So we're kind of doing what the snapshot did up here, but I'm also just going to add one here just to see um, if it makes any difference, especially with this fast shit. So we'll give it an integer here. Let's get that playing again. Try this crazy one again. Let's just turn this off. Interesting stuff. Oh, let's um you know for fun let's just put a corpus on this let's do let's do this um just in the video with the kind of what i intended now uh, of course we need to put this corpus before everything not make the mistake we did in the last video and we're going to take the midi from grand piano turn on the frequency uh we'll mute the grand piano <laughs> Try something else. We'll do the spectral resonator, that's a little bit more satisfying. MIDI from Grand Piano. Ah, no, this needs to go after, doesn't it? Ah, uh, okay. Man, I've made the mistake again, guys. I'm sorry. Now I'm interested in the corpus again. Not getting much from that. Let's try one of these bases. To increase the range. Do we? Maybe 
maybe the speed limit is screwing it up. We're not getting the high octaves now. Maybe I've mucked this up. Uh, let's bypass this. Wrong one. Oh no. We're not getting those high notes now. I don't know if we ever originally were actually. Um, of course I've turned this off. Alright, I'm going to stop. My brain's foggy. Uh, yeah, I'll have a think a bit more. Again, if you have experience working with this kind of thing, and you can offer any in insight on how do we can smooth it out a bit better. I know we're kind of uh, reinventing the wheel here, but, you know, it's um, it's good for the brain, man. All right, hope you're doing good.